Hi, and welcome to City Desk, a behind the scenes look at Santa Barbara's top local news stories. I'm your host, Jerry Roberts, joined by an all star lineup of local journalists for an inside look at these headlines. A state lawmaker from San Luis Obispo emerges as the top Republican to replace Representative Lois Capps. A big time LA developer finally wins approval for the Miramar Hotel and predicts smooth sailing from here. We'll see. And Nick Welsh's latest man crush on a critter in the wild, this time he falls hard for baby sea lions. Plus, coming up later, a special quiz to test the news IQ of our panelists and all the drought tips of the week. Joining me from high atop the South Salina Street World Headquarters of TBSB, an all Santa Barbara independent panel. Staff writer Kelsey Brueger, staff writer Liz Hoffman, and executive editor Nick Welsh. Thanks, all of you, for coming. Kelsey, the San Luis Obispo <coughs> County Assemblyman with the unpronounceable last name known as mm -hmm. Cacho, right. uh, made an impressive entry into the race. What, what are his chances? Right, so Cacho showed up to the Santa Barbara Courthouse last Friday, April 17th. Uh, steps were filled behind him with uh, a, a bunch of well-known Santa Barbara Republicans. You sort of have to fill the steps, um, otherwise it's just no point in doing it, I think. But um, So Chris Mitchum was there, who spoke on his behalf, who, who lost to Lois Capps last November by three percentage points. Dale Francisco, who's the new county party chair. Gregory Gandrude, former chair. Frank uh, Hotchkiss, city council member. Supervisor Steve Lavanino. So, Quite a few people. Um, Brooks Firestone. Brooks Firestone, how could I forget, right. Um, and he spoke, had a lot of good things to say about him. So it really, I mean, as far as on the media front, you know, Cacho's coming out strong. I mean, he, um, you know, people are, he, at least he presented himself as the candidate who has people behind him. And he's the only candidate from SLO. Right. So that, which is, what, 40, 43 percent of the votes. Right, 43 like percent of the votes. and. He's represented uh, the 35th district since 2010 and walked into office pretty easily, um, or you know, was was elected fairly easily. Um, so, so people up there know him. I imagine he'll spend a lot of time down in Santa Barbara, um, just campaigning. Uh, and is he? Who? Who's the other Republicans? Who are? So Justin Fareed um, has also announced he's running. He's the guy with the football. He's the guy with the football, exactly right. <laughs> and so it's so funny because everyone knows him as the guy with the football, which I think is probably a disadvantage for him. But then it's also like we're all still talking about the guy with the yeah, football. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. And Mitchum, so, Chris so that Mitchum, means he's not running. So I mean, he, you know, he hasn't, he's all but endorsed him. He spoke on his behalf. Um, so I don't think he's running. Is this mean that the Chris Mitchum Film Festival is dead, do you suppose? I think we could still run it. I think, <laughs> I think it'd be a big hit. It just won't have the yeah. urgency. Now last week, uh, or last show, Nick uh, Welsh declared flatly, and I believe went to Vegas right. and put $10,000 <laughs> mm -hmm. on the fact that Laura Capps will not run. Right. Uh, so, uh, the daughter of Lois, what, what's your sense right. of that? I, you know what, I don't know. I think she's still deciding. I haven't spoken to her, so if I had to guess, I would say she's going to do it. Um, that's just sort of a feeling I have, not based on any information. <laughs> but <laughs> to, quote, to quote Nick Welsh. <laughs> I, I have absolutely no information either, and I also think she's running. So well, well, you, okay. you've talked I to have You're on the, you got an open line. <laughs> I actually have a little information. Um, in the past week, uh, Representatives from Emily's List came to town. They met with her. Emily's List is a big uh, donor outfit. Uh, it funds women candidates throughout the country. Uh, they jump in early. They jump in big. And apparently, they met with her. And they didn't meet with anybody else. And they said, "We would like you to run." Uh, she met with some people from the DCCC, Democratic Central Blah 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 Committee, and um, you know, depending on who you want to believe. <laughs> They said, I think you should believe that talented <laughs> political columnist in the Independent. <laughs> Jerry Roberts, you know, the DCCC all but said, please, baby, please. Um, Laura's still trying to figure out. She's doing Hamlet, she's doing Cuomo, and she's, she's sort of um, figuring out whether she wants to run. I think there was another meeting 
um, where she uh, met with um, Sarah Miller McCune, who just gave five million bucks to UCSB, so when she likes you, um, you get liked. Um, and she apparently urged uh, Laura to run. So all of that suggests there's a support, but Laura has never run, I, I, I know she ran for um, school president at um, uh, Roosevelt when Did she, she went there. Did she won. Well, there you go. So are. she has a lesson. Undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, she is a sort of the weird one because she grew up in Santa Barbara, she is a Don, she's the only one in the race who's a Don, yet she is a carpetbagger. Back to Cacho. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of the reasons that he has a shot is mm -hmm. the top two primary. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not like it's right. going to be. It's not like it has to be. And, the, and it sounds like there's going to be at least two and possibly three very strong Democrats, which could divide the, the vote. Right, if right. Can. And I think, I mean, if you're a Democrat, you're probably pretty worried about that. I think from their perspective, it's still early. Um, they don't have to come out and endorse uh, or, you know, put all their weight behind one candidate just yet, but eventually they'll have to, I, I think. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep an eye on it for the next 511 <laughs> days. Right. <laughs> and, you, and you're, you're going to be covering the race, right? I think right? so, yeah. 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 And you know you know the, uh, the job uh, description for a political writer. What is that? Uh, watch the battle from high on a hill, ride down and shoot the wounded. So, okay. <laughs> don't forget. Liz Hoffman, after a saga that has had more chapters than war and peace, um, developer Rick Caruso was all smiles after the Board of Supervisors mm -hmm. voted to move ahead uh, with the long-stalled Miramar project. What was the key to the final deal? Well, I think and it's important to remember he's been all smiles twice before. This is his third, <laughs> his third project to get approved. The other two he just never went through with. I think he blamed the economy those times. This time, um, it was before the Board of Supervisors, some neighbors and him had appealed the Montecito Planning Commission's approval. Uh, this time, Supervisor Salud Carbajal and county staff sort of brokered a deal with Caruso's camp to, to give him what he wanted in terms of beach club memberships and event sizes for his, his hotel. And in turn, he said he could possibly provide, you know, off-site parking if the need arises in the future, which was people's main concern. And they withdrew their opposition. The neighbors did before. Yeah, they, they got a very, very confidential deal. <coughs> There's been some speculation. Ooh, tell us all about it. <laughs> uh, no, no specifics from anyone, but speculation runs rampant uh, that they got some secured parking spots. This family didn't have any um, they had off, no parking, no right? off street parking before. And now they got allegedly up to five secured spots for their house, um, which is going to add a lot of money to their already very valuable home. So. And what was uh, uh, Supervisor Carbajal, who's running for Congress, he was deeply involved with this, I'm sure, solely in the public interest, but uh, what, did, what did he do? It was a win-win. Win-win, sure. as he likes to say. <laughs> right. Uh, he was involved. You know, he, I, I'm sure they had talks up until that meeting, and he, it was all <clears throat> his idea, too, um, with, with Caruso's support to have this off-site parking plan. It's... It's a little nebulous. Some people have their have their doubts about whether it'll work. A lot of comparisons to the Ellen Conto parking situation. So. And how many how many rooms or how many units? Or? 170 rooms, 436 parking spots, a scaled down version of his previous hotels. And how much how much if I want to spend the weekend there? How much <laughs> you figure that will set me? You know, I've asked, and my dad always used to say, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. So <laughs> <laughs> here's that. So do you think that Caruso will end up giving more than 50000 or less than 50000 to salute for his campaign? He's <laughs> already given fifteen. he He's already given In 15. 2012, so. Well, at, yeah, what do you think? I th you think there's a, any Isn't there a limit, you know? <laughs> well, it's a federal race. I don't think, don't, can't, can't they have, like, their uh, super PACs? And, Miramar PAC? Yeah. Yeah, the Miramar PAC. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> fifteen for every room. And this has been going on for how long? He got his first approval in 2008. He bought the property, I think, about long, maybe 10 years ago. He's had been the third developer to, to buy to rebuild this storied hotel. So. You think he'll get it done in time? Which time? 28, 20 April 30th, 2018. That's no. the party. Oh, okay. No. Let me, let me, no. Let's have another bet. <laughs> no. and, and why do you think so? Um, he hasn't yet. There's always been something, you know, there's always, you know, nothing was stopping him before. He could have done it. Um, there'll be something else. So you think it's him 
he, he, he won't get it done on time, rather than some political I opposition. think at this point it's going to be him. It, and what would, what would that look like? Why would he do that? Financing issues, uh, trying to get to, you know, is, I think that's a very uh, tall order to get it built that fast. But he did knock down the, the sort of decrepit right. old hotel, he right? He cleared, cleared the property, it, it was either in 2014 or 2013, there's, there's nothing there now, so. Do you think that he will run the hotel, assuming that he gets it done, which Nick is going to bet ten thousand dollars? Ten thousand. <laughs> more, more rumors for you if you want that. Heard. Absolutely. Heard <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> sure. Heard from heard from several people that he found an operator. You know, he'll he'll handle the construction of the hotel. He's not going to run it. He has no experience running hotels. He's a shopping center guy, whatever that means. Um, uh, some company called called Rosewood. They run luxury hotels pretty well, it seems like. So, and I, I asked Caruso's camp if that was true, and they didn't confirm it, but they did put a smiley face and a uh, exclamation point in the email. So they're pretty hot to trot. On so they sent you an emoji with a. With a <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pretty hot to trot on, trot on the project. With and this it. was in response to you asking if they were going to have somebody else run it. That, that was one of my questions. So they, but is that the one that got the emoji, right? It was a very short email with an exclamation point and an emoji. Do we, does anybody care if he flips it? I mean, if he, so say he does complete it by 2018, is, is that going to be controversial? I think the neighbors are pretty sick and tired of, of not having a hotel there. They were pretty vocal in their support of getting it done, even with parking concerns. So. How much is this all costing him? Do we know? He said about $200 million. He He put on a... A good show that he would have enough of that so we'll see so if he spends 200 million and then tries turns around on May 1st and, and gets 300 million is that okay with us that should I feel okay about that or I not? think you should feel okay about that yeah. because why because we get more tax because yeah. the county gets more taxes oh yeah the county will get a ton more money and, and, and a billionaire getting richer there's nothing not to love well there's that's that's true the one percent but it is a hotel for the one percent right? that's true no so what do you think? I mean, this, is, this has been going on a long time. And during this period, there have been other major real estate uh, developments that have not gone so well from, from billionaires, right? The Beanie Baby. Oh, Beanie Baby tried it. Um, Ian before that, Ian Schrager tried it. Um, you know, I think it's a lot, you know, developers will say it's, it was a fabulous place, but it was sort of a rundown place before. Um, but to have a lot with a train track going through it has certain challenges. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it could work, but it's just been so long. You do think there's a curse on the property. And certainly with, um, as you say, he's a third developer and he's on the third try. So why should we get it done now? What was the vote on the supervisor, on the board? Unanimous. It was unanimous. Mm -hmm. And how does the Montecito Planning Commission feel about this? Because they voted against it, didn't they? Right. They voted. There were a couple meetings, a couple very long meetings, and they asked a ton of questions, uh, punted after the first meeting to a second meeting. Um, you know, I think I think they wanted it approved. They just had concerns. I, I, I couldn't speak for all of them or any one of them in particular, but I, I think they'd probably be happier over being How How long happier. were the meetings? They were each about six or seven hours. Did you have I, to sit there for the whole meeting? I did. Did you bring a sandwich or did you go out? <laughs> I brought a whole buffet. Are you kidding? No, yeah. people, people don't appreciate what it, 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 seriously. I mean, you have to sit there for six or seven hours and listen to this stuff because if you miss something, then, mm -hmm. oh, that was the quote that you wanted to get. Yeah. So we, we congratulate <laughs> you. City does congratulate you on, <laughs> your, on your efforts. Thanks. All right. Well, uh, you say he won't get it done. You know, they, I just, one, Quick story, in the 70s in San Francisco, there's a project, Pier 39, it's right ne next to Fisherman's Wharf, right. sort of a mix. <clears throat> and the developer said he would get it done on a date certain. And Senator, now Senator Dianne Feinstein, who was on the Board of Supervisors, said he would never would. And if he did, she would show up in a bikini and jump into the bay. And he did. And she showed up in, in, in this long one-piece bathing suit from Sutro Baz and waved to everybody, but she did she didn't not jump, jump in. in the bay. Yeah. Hmm. No. So. It's too bad we didn't get a similar bet. It could have been. Yeah. It would have been. Well, I think we should, you know, yeah. make one. Make, yeah. make yeah. one. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll jump in into the bay in a bikini. You know, yeah. well, <laughs> just the Speedo. Yeah, okay. Go with the Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a picture of that next week.
<laughs> um, so, Nick, you churned out something like 95,000 words <laughs> on the state of baby that sea lions. That was the edited down yeah. 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 in Santa Barbara. But before you talk about it, there's someone here who wants, <laughs> wants to thank you on pers- purpose. Hello, Nick. Uh, Thanks so much for your story. I haven't been able to finish it yet, but I'm hoping to on the weekend. <laughs> All right, as we talk about this. <laughs> too well nourished to read it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is clearly a fraud. Yeah. This is like the ones on our cover, way too fat and sassy. He's gonna, yeah, but he's going to go with the fish yeah. that you have. Leave him here, leave okay. him here, because right. he's cute. Right. He's we don't want to be blocking the sight line. All right, so we're going to show some pictures while we talk about this uh, by Paul Wellman, who went with you uh, yeah. on the assignment. And w- what was the deal? How did, what, what, what was the, the well, well, the assignment was, um, there was a guy in town named Peter Hogwarts who, since the 70s, had been running something called the uh, Marine Mammal Center. And it, he's a guy who has uh, the license with the state that permits him to drive up and down the entire coast <coughs> looking for uh, marine mammals to save. So right now, um, there is this onslaught of starving uh, baby sea lions who are washing up uh, on the coast of California, mostly Santa Barbara South. So right now there have been 2,700 baby sea lions uh, rescued. Um, this res- year? This year, just the first three months of this year. Last year there were 640. So we're about 20 times, and, and that was all year. So this is. 20 times the sort of the state average for the last 10 years of of baby sea lions. So what's happening is the water's too warm. There's something called a blob out there, which is about, was it, a thousand miles in diameter? Is that a scientific term? Yeah, it is a scientific term. It's a thousand miles uh, in diameter. It's it's like very, it's like eight degrees, six degrees warmer than it was last year. And it's chasing a lot of the um, sea life. Uh, on which the sea lions depend. What do they eat usually? Uh, they like uh, sardines. They like uh, anchovies. They like squid. Um, Sounds they, good to me. Yeah. Cheese plate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so the, the the squid, which we've been having banner years with the squid, they've all gone north, um, and the anchovies have just disappeared. The whole, you know, it, it's there's there's so many fewer. If you can even say many fewer. Um, uh, sardines, I'm sorry, not anchovies, that the uh, federal government said there's no no fishing uh, on sardines this year. First and, time. and somebody in L.A. kidnapped one right. of these things, right? They, yeah. they put it in their car and drove away. They drove off. They still haven't found the baby sea lion. <laughs> then there was a sea lion in San Pedro who, there was some guy who had caught some fish and he was posing by the pier was, you know, on his boat, hey, look at my fish. And the sea lion jumps over the board of his boat grabs the fish, scratches him, takes him overboard. Really? And uh, he manages to come back up, but yeah. So they don't make good pets? <laughs> they don't make good pets, no. And how much of this is to do with uh, climate change, drought, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Well, it's hard not to see the two being related. Um, I mean, obviously there's wild fluctuations uh, uh, in, in the natural environment, with a, even without climate change, but climate change is definitely highlighting it and intensifying it. Other aspects here is that we have more sea lions now than we've had in 13,000 years, supposedly. Um, well, you covered that, right? In thir- the 13,000 13, years, years ago, <laughs> I was here. And, uh, and, and in 1970, there was about uh, 25, 30,000 sea lions off uh, California. Now we have over 300, maybe 400,000. So there's a lot of speculation that we have exceeded the carrying capacity of the ocean. So one of the sort of uh, dilemmas here is, should nature be allowed to take its course? But when you're walking down along the beach and you see some baby sea lion, you know, struggling not to, you know, die, people have a tendency to want to intervene and help. And this guy Howarth, he's, he's doing Howarth the Lord's Howarth. He's doing the Lord's work here. He's doing the Lord's work. It's, it's really kind of, I mean, he's picked up 434 as of today, which is, that's just Santa Barbara County. So you put that in perspective. All of California last year was 640. Um, but by some weird bureaucratic strangers, he has to send our sea lions up to Morro Bay and then they get shipped to Sausalito. 
uh, where they get rehabbed and then released six weeks later if they make it. Um, about, I talked to one guy who runs a rehab place up in Gaviota. He says 10% of them get euthanized, and another 20% die before they can even, even get euthanized. So, you know, when they're found, they're weigh, they weigh about 20 pounds. At this point in their lives, they should weigh about 50 to wow. 70. Wow. And, and quickly, you, you, you said that they were canaries in the coal mine, not to mix a metaphor. Right. But why is that? Well, I think everybody likes to use that line. Um, I didn't use it, but I quoted somebody else's using it. He. It was in there. It was in there. <laughs> the guy who, I was. I was waiting for. It. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a guy named uh, Sam Dover who runs a, a very impressive rehab center up uh, at the old um, uh, Vista Del Mar School uh, up in Gaviota, and he did uh, samples. He took fecal samples of these creatures and. They are very free with their fecal samples. And so he took them to these labs, um, and they found that um, they were resistant to uh, certain antibiotics. Um, and no antibiotics, these are creatures that have never been exposed wow. to antibiotics. So it raises the question, how did the antibiotics get out there in the first place? So well, that would be the canary part. We'll wait for part two yeah. of the, the saga. magnum opus about that. <laughs> All right, now it's time for the City Desk Pop Quiz in which we test the news IQ of our guests. Uh, we're, Oscar, are we ready to roll on this? Okay, everybody look at the monitor. Let's see, Kelsey. Yes. Who is this man and why is he smiling? That is Rob, uh, his last name is Kunz... Kunz... Yeah, Kunz yes, correct. Kunz yeah. Kunz yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Easier than Kacho's last name, but um, um, and he won a Pulitzer Prize for the uh, investigative journalism he did with the LA with the Daily Breeze, actually. And a former Santa Barbara. And a former education. Santa Barbara education news press reporter and news hawk reporter. I understand he contributed to the Independent as well. Yeah, and his best known scene, he was playing the trumpet in Citizen Macaw. The uh, <laughs> The documentary of uh, one oh, yeah. of, of, of a brave man's uh, tr search for truth in the American Riviera, playing taps at a demonstration. All right, number two. Let's see. Oh, I know what we're going to do. All right, everybody has to do this. Nick, we'll start with you. What is the correct spelling of the name of congressional candidate and state assembly member Katja Lorcadjian? <laughs> A C H A D J I A N. That's right. All right. <laughs> Liz, what is the correct spelling? <laughs> Was I supposed to be paying attention? Yeah, no, no, no. You just on your own. I'm sure you know. A C H A D J I A N. And Kelsey, what that's, is the that's correct? They're both right. Huh? <laughs> they're both right. Okay. All right. Nobody. And that's very impressive. And then we have one more picture, I think, to put up. Uh, and we saw the correct spelling there. Very good for everyone. Do we have that? Okay. Um, let's see. Liz, who is this man, and why is he smiling? That is... Uh, scowling. Why is he scowling? Uh, Mr. Moonbeam killing a snake, the governor. Or uh, maybe killing a snake. Yeah, it's kind of... It looks a little staged to me. It does look staged, doesn't it? Yeah. And also, he's the only person in the world who goes after snakes with a blue button-down shirt. Yeah, and khakis. <laughs> it's just a bad look, but the governor, is, <laughs> he's out there doing it. All right, uh, time for our drought quiz. Um, did you wash your dishes today? I didn't. Did you wash your dishes today? I know you didn't. <laughs> okay, if you had wash your, wash your dishes, how many gallons do you think it would have taken to wash them? Mm, 20. Excellent. That's exactly right. 20 by hand. How about in the dishwasher? I don't have a dishwasher. Do you have a dishwasher? I do. How many in the dishwasher? I don't know. 16. Huh? 10. And as we all know, one gallon per almond. So we'll put in the 10 this time. And you can either wash your dishes or eat these almonds. All right? Hmm. How about brushing your teeth? How many gallons of water? Is that if you leave the faucet running? How do you brush your teeth? Do you Not with the faucet running, that would be deplorable. Yeah. 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 So how many do you think? Two. One. One gallon, you can brush your teeth 
or have an almond. You ever wash your clothes? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How many? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I criticize myself severely for saying. Yeah, I, 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 do. I, I bet just, you do. It just came out wrong. It isn't what. It isn't what I. <laughs> like he's smelling it all the way <laughs> no, over no, the table. How many gallons of water do you think it took? Oh God, to wash thirteen. Your wrong. It took thirty. Oh my God. Yeah, it takes a lot. So. Is everybody conserving water? What did you do this week to conserve? I didn't water? wash my clothes. I didn't do any laundry. <laughs> I didn't do any dishes either. Yeah. <laughs> I should get a gold star yeah. or something. <laughs> just let them pile up. <laughs> you need some sort of shopping rebate from the government just to buy new clothes instead of going to the... That's a, that's a really I like that idea. idea. Yeah. So. So what did you do to, to preserve water this week? I did my laundry, but after a month of not doing it, so I feel like that counts. So you've cut back at least 25% mm-hmm. on doing your laundry. What'd you do this week? I can't take a percent. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow, and you're like Mr. Drought. Mr. Drought. <laughs> Mr. Drought. I, just take, I just take very short showers and very, uh, no water with a the, with the toothbrush. And, All right. And I do the dishes by hand. That's more than a, uh, than a dishwasher. Double. Yeah, it is. That's the way I do it. All right. Well, that's it for another show. Thank you all for coming. Kelsey Brueger, Nick Welsh and Liz Hoffman. And thank you all for watching. Uh, Visit us on Facebook at SB City Desk. Send us uh, an email at sbcitydesk at gmail if you have a topic or a question that you'd like us to cover. And find us on Twitter at SB City Desk as well. We'll see you next time on City Desk and thanks again for watching.